Now we're going to have a look at uh, what's grabbing headlines in the press. Ange Mujang's uh, with us today. She's starting off with Joe Biden's visit to Ukraine yesterday afternoon, of course. Uh, how's the press treating it then, Solange? Well, across the globe, from Spain to Chile and back to Europe again, uh, papers are discussing Biden's surprise visit to Kyiv and how he stands united uh, with Ukraine, and he said, for as long as it takes. Not only are the images of the two presidents omnipresent, but what's equally fascinating as well is the diversity of uh, analysis pieces in regard to the visit. As Le Figaro puts it, um, Biden is resolute and unshakable uh, in his support as Europe has. It writes here that Europe has no better ally than the cool-headed uh, U.S. president. But of this bolstering of uh, Zelensky, the Washington Post, uh, it says that uh, it not only goes through what it call it, what it describes describes as a cloak and dagger uh, move oh, in regard to the surprise visit. It's a fascinating read of how they pulled this off. But in one of the Post's opinions, it also writes that the visit, um, this, this opinion writer argues that the visit shows who leads Europe. Uh, that is a catchy headline, but, and can be disputed, of course. Um, but the article argues that this visit carries a different kind of weight from the visits of other European of other presidents uh, in, within Europe, namely of the unity between Europe and uh, the U.S. in regard to the war in Ukraine. Now, for The Atlantic, it writes that um, the visit is a gut punch, it says, to Putin, that missiles and arms uh, and aid are uh, better, are, are, are meters of the support, but photo ops like this matter just as much. Now, it is too early, though, for a back slapping, writes the Financial Times. It argues that there is confidence on the outside, but quite a lot of anxiety behind the scenes, that while Russia's military has uh, performed worse than expected, Expected in the war, it, uh, its economy has done better than expected, and that peace talks, if they happen, uh, are still for now just a hopeful scenario uh, that this will be a long co conflict, it writes, and that European s solidarity could eventually potentially uh, flagger, and China's involvement as well could shift the paradigm. Let's go to Kenya for this next story. This is about uh, a sobering investigation in regard to tea. Yeah, the BBC has uncovered in an expo expose titled The True Cost of Our Tea how tea farm workers in Kenya, women, uh, have been victims of sexual abuse. More than 70 women have been abused by their supervisors at the farms that make teas for Lipton, PG Tips and Sainsbury. Uh, with little uh, other work available, the women told the BBC that they had no choice but to meet the sexual demands of their bosses. And also it writes that similar allegations have also surfaced over a decade ago. Now, the Kenyan press is discussing this. They are uh, covering the BBC, uh, the story. They're also, though, covering the extent to which the tea industry is important in Kenya. Uh, it writes uh, that uh, it's becoming a, a, an even more lucrative market uh, because of the Chinese demand. Uh, factories are expected to more than double uh, to reach that demand. It is a multi-million dollar market in Kenya, at least for those on top. Let's switch gears now to the climate crisis. The French papers, they're discussing the drought that is uh, hitting the country and much of uh, Europe. Pretty worrying uh, looking ahead to the summer. Yeah, as of Monday, uh, there have been a record 30 consecutive days without rain in France. And Libération tells us that it would need to rain 10 millimetres every day across the nation to make up for this loss of uh, in, in France's water tables. Now, these extreme doubt conditions are thought to be due to climate change. Studies are underway about this particular episode, but the paper notes that global warming is creating what it calls an infernal cycle, where warm air is keeping wet weather from coming and hitting Europe with uh, the expected uh, rains of winter. Now, in this regard, France is not alone in, in regard to drought. Italy is also feeling it. Reuters tells us that the Po River in Italy, for example, has six, over 60 percent less water than usual. In Venice, gondolas are, uh, uh, are stuck in dry canals and creating fears that when rains do come, that it could lead to extreme flooding in Italy.
Yeah, very worrying for the uh, summer, as I said. Solange has uh, found us to finish off a couple of articles about toiletries. Yeah, if you've ever wondered why we use toilet paper, this article is for you. Slate <laughs> explains the history of toilet paper and how it was invented in China in 300 BC and how actually it's a relatively new phenomenon here in Europe. Uh, it dates back to just over 100 years and how post-COVID many are actually turning to water as an alternative like in many other countries in the world. Now, another bathroom change that is about The Guardian uh, is, says that a number of an increasing number of men, uh, namely in countries like Japan, for example, are deciding to sit rather than stand when they urinate. Um, and it argues that this could actually keep to other toiletries in the bathroom uh, clean and, and keep them from being splattered by microscopic droplets, that is, if they are within a meter or two of the toilet. A plea of sorts by The Guardian to avoid the splash and just sit. Now, one thing that hasn't changed much over the centuries is... Uh, this object. Uh, it's being mm. discussed in a number of papers today as Metro explains this six inch wooden tool uh, was thought to be a sewing tool. It was discovered uh, many years ago. It's two, some 2,000 years old and uh, academics now realize, it's, it was found by Hadrian's Wall. Academics have now realized that this was no knitting needle. Uh, they believe it's a tool because it has rounded edges on both sides and they now think that it was used for female or male pleasure. Certainly would stitch you up anyway, wouldn't it? <laughs> One way of putting it. Thank you, Solange, for bringing us that object on France 24. More news coming up for you very shortly. Do stay with us if you can.